I never thought I would end up turning this into a series of videos, but here we are with family tree number 8. It's House Tyrell's turn in the spotlight. The Tyrells are a powerful and wealthy family that rule the Reach as Wardens of the South, but they didn't always have the strength that they have now. Around 300 years ago, before Aegon the Conqueror and his sisters took over Westeros with their dragons, the Tyrells were only stewards for a king. They served the Gardner family, who ruled as kings in the Reach before Aegon united the Seven Kingdoms. During the process of uniting Westeros, the Gardner family went extinct, trying to fight against the Targaryens. Harlan, Tyrell, surrendered to Aegon and for that reason only, he appointed him Lord of the Reach. The Tyrells, along with the Gardeners and a bunch of other houses, claim descent from Garth Greenhand, a mythical king who was said to be the first man in Westeros. Harlan may have been the first Lord of the Tyrell family, but he wasn't the house's founder. That was Alistair Tyrell, an Andal adventurer who was the sworn shield of a Gardner king. Alistair's son, Gareth, was very different from his father and was more into books and was the first high steward. With that backstory out of the way, let me start this family tree with a name you'll actually recognize, Olena Redwine. She may have been married into the family, but this is the most prominent character who's practically behind every decision made. She earned herself the nickname Queen of Thorns because of her quick and sharp personality and remarks. She doesn't stray from telling people how she truly feels. House Redwine is a powerful family in the Reach, with very close ties to the Tyrells. Even they claim descent from Garth Greenhand, specifically Garth's son Gilbert of the Vines. He taught the people of the Arbor, where they rule from, how to make wine. House Redwine is known for two things, their wine and their strong naval fleet. She married Luther Tyrell, who is described by the Queen of Thorns herself as an oaf. Crazy enough, both Luther and Olena were betrothed to marry Targaryens, but both marriages fell through. Luther died from riding off a cliff while hunting hawks. I guess it didn't occur to him to look where he was riding. Luther was the oldest of four brothers. His brothers aren't too important, but are fairly accomplished. Gorman is a maester who was set to replace Pycelle as Grand Maester until Tywin decided to keep Pycelle in power. Garth is the Lord Seneschal of Highgarden, who has the nickname Garth the Gross for his gassy nature. And Morin is the Lord Commander of Old Town City Watch. Two of his brothers have children, but have very little mention in the story, so like always, I'll focus on the main branch. Luther and Olena had three children together, Mace, Janna, and Mina. Mace being the only name you'll probably recognize. Mace is the current Lord of Highgarden and Warden of the South, but he doesn't have the greatest reputation. Mace has been taking credit for delivering Robert Baratheon his only loss during his rebellion, when really, that isn't true. Mace wasn't even at this battle. It was his bannerman, Randall Tarly, the asshole father of Samuel Tarly, who fought Robert's army. And it wasn't very much a defeat either. Robert retreated to meet up with Ned Stark and his allies because he knew he had no chance against the entire Reach, who have the largest population in Westeros. Cersei Lannister sent you to Bravos to get you out of her way. And she sent the bloody King's Guard to make certain you stayed there, so out of her way you stayed. Eating, drinking, singing, while your own children were being rounded up by... That is an entirely unfair accusation. Look me in the eye and tell me there was no singing. Well, it won't happen again. Mace is kind of similar to Cersei. Both want more power for themselves and family, but aren't intellectually capable. Mace wanted his daughter, Marjorie, to become queen and wanted to become the Hand of the King. Both of these eventually come true. This might come as a surprise for some, but Marjorie and Sir Loras aren't the only children of Mace and his wife, Aliri Hightower. They have two older brothers, Willis and Garland. Willis, the oldest, was crippled in his first tourney, going against Oberyn Martell. Oberyn knocked him off his horse, but the horse fell on top of his leg, crushing it. Oberyn considers Mace Tyrell a fool for letting Willis compete when he wasn't ready. Even after the tourney, Willis and Oberyn became friends, sharing an interest in eating horse flesh. This is huge considering the long rivalry between House Martell and the Tyrells. Because of his bad leg, Willis has turned to reading and studying and became renowned for being one of the greatest breeders in Westeros. In the story, Olena plans to marry Sansa to Loras, but in the books, it's to Willis, who she thinks very highly of. 
Tywin got in the way and quickly married Sansa to Tyrion while trying to marry Cersei to Willis. This time, it was Elena to get in the way, calling Cersei too old and used. The second brother caught from the show, Garland, is a character I completely agree with removing. Loras has always been known as a great Tyrell fighter, but his older brother Garland is just as skilled, if not more. Garland has no interest in fame and glory, unlike Loras, so he kind of goes unnoticed. After the Tyrells help the Lannisters defeat Stannis at Blackwater, Garland is made Lord of Brightwater Keep. Brightwater Keep is the home of House Florent, who supports Stannis. During the Battle of Blackwater, Garland, dressed in dead Ren Renly's armor to scare off some of the men in Stannis' army, they called him Renly's ghost. An important detail the show left out is how did Renly end up with the Tyrells' support during the War of Five Kings. The Tyrells command so many fighters that whatever side they choose to align with would most likely win the war. Loras squired for Renly when he was younger, which was the start of their taboo relationship. It would be easy for Loras to convince his family to back Renly since he was unmarried and the Tyrells were eager to have Marjorie become the queen. Her marriage with Renly doesn't last very long however and the Tyrells agree to join the Lannisters. Together, we could end this war in a fortnight. Marjorie was set to marry Joffrey, and Loras became a member of the King's Guard. Oberyn Martell believes Loras isn't as good of a warrior as he is Attorney Jouster, and he might be right. In the books, Cersei orders Loras to take Dragonstone and ends up with so many injuries that he's kind of dying. When Olenna finds out the truth about Joffrey's insanity, she along with Littlefinger have him poisoned and killed. She'll turn the boy against you as soon as she can. By the time you're married, it'll be too late. Luckily for you, the Queen Regent is rather distracted at the moment, mourning her dear departed boy. Accusing her brother of his murder, which he didn't commit. Well, he could have done. Oh, he could have done, but he didn't. You don't know, Grandmother. But I do know. You don't think I'd let you marry that beast, do you? Marjorie ends up with Tommen, who was perfect for the scheming Tyrells. But before all of this, Renly and Loras plan to convince Robert Baratheon to put aside Cersei and marry Marjorie. Soon after Marjorie becomes queen, Cersei plans to remove her from influencing Tommen and having control. She makes up accusations and has her arrested by the High Sparrow awaiting her trial. I'd like to see my brother. Confess. Please. How is he? At least tell me that. Confess. I am the queen and I demand to see my brother. Sinners don't make demands. They make confessions. <laughs> what happens next to her and Loras has been a cliffhanger for years. Now I know all these random names in this family may be overwhelming for some of you, but trust me, they're pretty irrelevant. I think George Martin likes to add a lot of characters to some of the great houses to make it seem more realistic. Having multiple children means a line of succession is in good hands. You gotta have a backup heir. Some of the Tyrell cousins follow Marjorie around and keep her company in King's Landing, and only one cousin has some notable dialogue. Leo the Lazy, one of the biggest assholes in the story. He's studying at the Citadel like a lot of Tyrells end up doing. He's a typical kind of person that had everything handed to him and can get away with whatever he wants. He spends his time gambling and drinking away his family's money, but also makes some time for making fun of his acquaintances. He's in the prologue chapter for A Feast for Crows where he talks about Daenerys and her dragons being real. Also, about an age of wonder and terror coming. Words you don't expect from someone in Westeros, let alone the Citadel. And that's the Tyrell family tree. All the requests for this video is what made me want to make this. So if there's anything you want to see, you can write it down in the comments. Thanks for watching this one, and if you haven't seen the other 7 family tree videos, I'll link to one of them on your screen now. All likes are appreciated. And you can subscribe for more. See you guys in the next video.